I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this poison dart frog block. We're going to start with preparing the background block. Usually I just use a solid square for the backgrounds, but in this case when I was drawing the poison dart frog I really wanted the focus to be on his face, but one of the key um, identifying parts of a poison dart frog are these toes with the the long toes with those suction cups on the tips of their toes and the only way i could get a focus on his face and get those toes in there was to make him look like he was kind of wrapping around a tree branch so that means we've got a pieced block in the background so before we get into how to do the frog i want to show you how we're going to do this pieced background block so that we get the the tree and the background so we're gonna start with an 11 inch square, just like we normally do for all of my patterns. And this one's already cut just so that I can be super fast with you guys here. Okay, so here we've got our block. So I originally cut this as an 11 inch square, and then this is really easy to do so you don't need any fancy templates or anything. You're gonna measure over three inches from this top left corner, and that's this part here, and you're going to measure one inch up from the bottom right corner and you're just going to slice your block between those two points. So three inches from the top left corner, one inch up from the bottom right corner, and then you're just going to slice from point to point and take away that triangle. So that's your first step. Then when we piece it on the block, you've got your batting square, which is, I usually cut mine around 11 inches, a little bit bigger than that lay this on it. This way you know that the batting extends past it all the way around. That's fine. You're going to trim it later. So get that piece down and then you've got a second piece of fabric and that's our green background fabric and for this you need to cut a rectangle that's 14 inches long and 7 inches wide and we're going to do a very simple stitch and flip. So you lay this down so that it is right along that edge and then I'm going to take it over to the machine and just using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew down um, those two raw edges. Okay, so I sewed it. You can see my seam here. The, one, the quarter inch doesn't have to be exactly a quarter inch, just something roughly a quarter inch. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it to your ironing board, fold that back over, press that seam nice and flat, and then I'm gonna quilt the block. So I always quilt my blocks when it's just the background fabric and the batting. I don't put a backing on there. And on this one, I'm probably just gonna quilt it in some parallel lines, uh, parallel to, the, to this seam. Quilt that all down, and then I'm gonna trim away the excess, anything that's hanging out past the batting. And I'll come back after I'm done quilting that down and show you one more time what it looks like before we start the applique. Okay, there we go. So I've got it quilted some lines down this way, some lines up this way. You'll notice I'm not worried about making it perfect. I just eyeballed this. I didn't do any marking. The spacing between the rows is uneven, but that's fine. It all just is holding it to the batting and it looks nice. So my next step before I get to work here is I'm gonna just trim away this excess so I'm not dealing with that. So just flip it over so you can easily see the batting. And I'm not worried about getting this perfect. I'm just worried about taking these flaps of fabric out of my way. So there we go. It is all ready for us to put the frog on there. Before I get to that, I should just very quickly mention both of these fabrics are from the Muted Rainbow uh, fabric bundle that you can get at Shiny Happy World. And these fabrics, this version that I did, both of these batiks that are in the background of the block are from the Batik Rainbow fabric bundle at Shiny Happy World. So just so you know what's what there, because I always get questions about the fabric. So in the next video, we're going to start talking about how to uh, use the applique frog pattern. In videos, I'm showing you how to make this poison dart frog block. So just to talk about the pattern briefly for a second, this is the current pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. And when I say current, it is July 15th, 2020. 
And uh, this is going to be exclusive to the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club until August 15th, 2020. So if you're watching this video now in, in July or early August 2020, you can go to the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club Clubhouse if you're in the club already and download your pattern. And if you're not in the club, join and this is the free pattern that'll be available to you right away. If you're watching this after August 15th, 2020, it'll be in the shop at shinyhappyworld.com. So we already had a video showing how to prepare the background block. So that was a previous video. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get the pattern onto the fabric that you're going to use and how to get everything ready to assemble on the block. So the first thing you're gonna do is print out your pattern or you can trace it. Um, I'm lazy, I really, really hate to print thing, to trace things, so I always print. I use paper-backed fusible adhesive. I like heat and bond, lightweight. That's what I use for all of my quilts. So this is what the pattern is gonna look like. It is already reversed and it is exploded, which means all the pieces are separated so you can print this right on the fusible adhesive and you don't have to worry about what pieces are gonna overlap. So after you get this printed or traced onto the paper side of the adhesive, you're gonna do what I call a rough cut. So the rough cut, I'll show you on this nice big piece. The rough cut means you don't cut right on the lines. You cut a little bit outside the lines for all of the pieces. And the reason that you do that is when you fuse it down, that adhesive goes all the way to the edge of the paper. If you were to cut this out on the line now while it's just paper and then fuse it to the to the um, fabric and then try and cut it out exactly on that line you'd miss a few threads and those few stray threads are going to fray when you wash it so by doing it this way you make sure that the adhesive is going to go all the way to the cut edge of the fabric and not even a thread is going to be left without any adhesive on it and that's going to help it hold up really well in the wash so cut all of the pieces out with a rough cut and fuse them to the wrong side of the fabric. So I've got, a, the, the frock doesn't have very many pieces, but they are kind of complicated looking pieces. So on my darkest color, I used a batik here. So batiks don't have a right and a wrong side. Um, but for the darkest color, I used the top of the head and the two legs, and your pieces will have labels on the patterns. I just uh, don't have labels on mine because I got impatient and printed before I had the labels on them. So the lighter color, so this is just a lighter shade of the purple, is for the mouth and for the two eyelids. And then I just used solid white for the two uh, larger eye pieces and solid black for the pupils of the eyes. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use all these markings. So you've got these pieces. The next thing we're gonna do is cut them out with a nice clean cut, and we're gonna transfer a lot of those markings to the background. Now, one note, just for those of you who don't wanna do all of this cutting by hand, if you have an electric cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette or a Brother Scan and Cut, anything like that, the pattern also includes an SVG file that you can download and use with any of those cutting machines. So the next video is going to be useful for you guys because it's gonna be talk about all of these inner markings that you'll need to transfer over since the SVG files are just the solid shapes. So we'll come back and all of the, I'll clean cut all of these pieces. That means cut them out on the lines and then I'll talk to you about transferring the markings. Okay, so now I've got all the pieces clean cut and clean cut just means I cut all the shapes out on that line, that solid line that is around each shape. And that line includes the seam allowance. So that's what I'm gonna show you next, is all of these dotted lines. So the dotted lines are showing you how pieces overlap, where pieces go, and where pieces are aligned on the block. And I'm gonna show you, um, I've transferred those markings just with a just with a chalk pencil to show up nicely on this. But I'm gonna show you how they work first by looking at the back of the pattern because black and white is clearer than anything else. And then when we're actually assembling the fabric pieces, I'll show you again what it looks like from the fabric side of things. So on this piece, you've got a whole bunch of markings that looks a little bit crazy with all of these dotted lines, but all of these have a purpose. So first of all, this weird slant ways line is showing you 
where this is going to be positioned on the block. That seam between the tree fabric and the, the grassy background fabric, that seam is going to go right where that line is. So these are showing you where the eyes, the pupils, and the eyelids are going to go. And this one shows you how much of this piece is tucked behind the mouth piece. So if I laid these out, like imagining that we have a quilt block here, I'm just going to assemble this. So this is going to be mirror imaged because we're looking at it from the back side, but it'll show you how these work. So I always start first with this piece. The, the head piece is going to be the first one you'll lay down for this block. And I'll lay that down so that this dotted line is lined up with the line on the block. Then I'm going to lay the mouthpiece over it. And you can see the mouthpiece has got a little thing showing uh, the piece that goes underneath it, how deep it goes. So you know it goes right there. And then let's get some legs in there. So we've got this leg piece tucks under over here and you can see that's telling you that it's tucking under and this is this mark here is telling you how far it's tucking under. So you know that one's going to go right there. Same thing on this one. This is showing you that it tucks under and how much it overlaps and that's showing where so it's not tucking under over here, although you could play with that a little bit. You could have it tucked over under here, but if you want it to look like mine, you're going to tuck it under there. And this line then should continue to line up with that seam on your block. So those are kind of optional. Even without the markings, you can figure out that the mouth overlaps the head by a little bit and that the, the legs under, tuck underneath the mouth there. But it's really important where the eyes are. That's always one of the most important things in all of my patterns. So I always mark the position where the eyes go. Everything else is kind of optional. But this would be telling me that the, the white part of the eye sits there and there. And then you lay the black pupils on. And they're going to go there. Whoops. And there. And these aren't, these are tending to poof up a little bit. And then this lid goes here and this lid goes here. So if you transferred all of the markings, this eyelid would have that slanty line there and the marking for what tucks underneath it. Same thing on this one, except without the seam line marked. These are just going to show where they tuck under the eyelids and the mark that seam line. This one is also going to show where they tuck under the eyelids and also where the pupils go. These are the only ones that I mark in a permanent marker because the black of the pupil, it's not going to show through. I don't need to worry about the black fabric, so I just use a Sharpie on those. Everywhere else I use chalk or pencil, something that can be erased. So the legs, it shows where they tuck under and where that seam line is, just where it tucks under. The mouth shows where it tucks under, the, or where it goes over the head, where it goes over the tops of the legs and where that seam line is. And on the head, you've got all kinds of markings where the seam line is, where the mouth come overlaps this piece, where the eyes go and where the eyelids go. If you don't want to mark all of those pieces, that's totally fine. Um, the ones that I most strongly recommend for this block are where the seam line is. That's going to help you get all of the pieces lined up in a way that looks natural and where the eyes go. So those are the kind of less optional. Obviously, it's your pattern. You can do whatever you want. But those are the ones that I would do for myself is getting those eyes and the eyelids and that seam line in there every and these uh, these eye markings here in the where the pupils are going to go the eyes are so important everything else is really just kind of optional and if you want to play around a lot with how the pieces look go for it that can be a lot of fun but if you want it to look like mine if you use those markings they'll just make it really really easy so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to layer that all together onto the block. Okay, now we're all ready to go. Uh, we've had a video that showed how to put together this pieced background block. We've had a video that showed how to um, 
transfer the pattern to the fusible adhesive and how to get that onto the fabric and how to transfer the markings. Now we're going to do the fun part and that is layering everything together. So I like to start with the head piece and I'm going to use this line to line it up on that seam. I think I want them to be a little bit lower down on here. It doesn't have to be exact, but that gives me an idea of where it's going to sit in the block. Then my next piece is going to be the mouth. And I'm going to lay this. So remember this piece, that's showing how far it tucks under. And this one is showing where it is positioned on this. So if you're using all of the markings, that's going to go there. Now, before I go any further, I want to check and see if I've got this the right distance from this edge of the block. So the next thing I'm going to put in is this leg over here. And that leg, whoops, let me adjust that. That leg is going to, again, this shows where how far it tucks under, and that shows where it tucks under. And that gives me good space on this side. So now I'm going to do the leg that goes down here and check the same thing. The eyes are several pieces to layer in, and before I do them, I wanna make sure I've got him positioned properly within the block. So now I'm gonna tuck that piece under there, and that should roughly line up here, and that's good. And that's getting a little close to the bottom edge here, so I think I am gonna move all of this up just a little bit. Those lines are really handy. That's still good there, so I didn't move it up too high. Get those little fingers all splayed out. All right, that looks better as far as spacing within the block. Now I'm going to lay the eye pieces down, and the one that has the seam line through it is the one that goes on that side, so that makes that easy. there. Now we'll do the pupils. There we go. So he's got these big buggy eyes that hang off the sides of the head, which can be a little tricky to do if you're not um, if you're not noticing that detail from the drawing. That's why these markings can be helpful. And then this one is going to sit over the top of the eyes like that. And this one is going to sit over the tops of the eyes on this side. Tuck that down just a little bit more. There we go. All right, everything is ready to be fused down and outlined, and I'm going to do a separate video where I talk you through that outlining process. Okay, he is all finished. Here is how I did the outlining. So I always really kind of think about my outlining before I start doing it because I want to minimize the number of times I need to stop and tie knots and start again. So I try and do as much of it in one pass as I can. And I did this in three different sections. So I started with the eyes and I started uh, started on this side of this eye. Uh, actually, I, I forgot, I'm sorry. I started over in here, like a little bit inside the eyelid. And I went once around the eyelid. My first time around, I go around three times because I try and give it a, uh, sketchy, scrapbooky kind of look. Um, so I'm going around all of these pieces three times. The first time around is always just kind of establishing that line. The second time around is when I do any attached parts. So I started just a little bit inside the eyelid here, went around once, and then went around a second time all the way across the bottom, and then I did around the white once, twice, three times, and I continued a little bit here, 
And then I went just once around the black eye because that's going to be black stitching on a black pupil and you can't see it. So I only do one row, one round of stitching there. Continue along here. So that is the that did all of the attached bits and finished the second time around. And now the third time is just kind of to finish everything up. So I go back down this little corner around and back down to where I started and tie off. I did the same thing on this side, went around the eyelid once, continued past it once, twice, three times, I'm sorry, went around it once, went around it a second time, once, twice, three times, here, down around the black pupil of the eye, around, that's the second time, and then a third time and tied off. Then I went just three times up here. And then I started down here and did all the rest in one pass. So I started here just a little bit inside the mouth and I went around once to establish that line and then started a second time around. And when I got to this little snippet here, I went one, two, three, four. You can't tell the difference between four rows of stitching and three. So sometimes I'll use four to stop so I don't have to knot it off. Picked up again here, continuing on my second path around, go across the bottom of the leg and then go all down here around once, twice, and three times. Continue along here, go past the base of the leg and then once, twice, three times. Back over the leg, up. Now I'm gonna do this little bit, one, two, three, four. Continuing my second trip around, all right, and now my third trip is just once all the way around here. Tie it off and knot it. So around these little fingers is a little bit fussy because these are some tight turns. Just take a deep breath, reduce your stitch, shorten your stitch length a little bit and go slow. You can totally do this. You just need to take your time. A lot of people ask about how long it takes me to outline one of these and I'm slow. It takes me about a half an hour to do my three rounds of stitching around a single block. And I'm, I have a ton of practice at this and I still go slow and that's how you get a nice neat line. It also is really important if you haven't already read kind of all of the background video tutorials and things like that, make sure you have a clear applique foot because that is gonna make a huge difference. It allows you to really see where you're going. That is the poison dart frog pattern. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and I'll see you next month with a new pattern. Bye.